Hi everyone, it's uh, Simon here. I have a new rig for those that are interested. It's a holographic projection rig um, and built in Cinema 4D. So here's some examples of some I made earlier. Let's go through those. So basically what it does is it turns your iPad or pretty much any screen into a holographic projector. Uh, obviously you need to make your own holographic projector physical one to do uh, a real case study, but you, I've also got virtual ones at Cinema 4D if you just want to demonstrate the concept. So, I'll uh, just give you a quick idea of what they look like. So here's one I designed myself, um, which has got acrylic sides, acrylic plates with armatures, and this bit on top to keep the sun out. Ideally, you want to be able to control the light in the space. And this one here is an existing solution which you can actually buy from a company called Holho, which I think are in Italy. And it's probably one of the cheapest ones in the market. And again, you just plunk your iPad on top. Um, that's their website if you want to check it out. Um, but either way, it's pretty cool. Oh, that's the schematics if you want to build my one. So um, these will be included in the pack. But I'm not really about creating things in acrylic. My bag is Cinema 4D. So um, looking at this... Um, in, in the Dropbox or download link, um, I've got a few projects for you. This one here is the My Design, and it's all set up so if you produce content through the content creator, you'll get a real time preview. But as you can see, as it's rendering, the content that's on the iPad is projecting as a hologram, and that'll work as you turn it around. So it's a real time solution. The other model I've got is based on the Holho, so if you actually wanted to just buy the products but make your own content but see it in reality beforehand, this rig will let you do that. So for this to work, what you need is to be able to make your own content, which effectively is um, a single 3D object seen from four points of view and then maps into a single texture. Now you could set up four cameras, render it off separately, put it together in After Effects, but um, that sounds like uh, too long-winded a process for me. So what I've done is I've created a rig that does it all in one go. Okay, so here's the content creation rig. Um, to explain what's going on, uh, first of all, you want to put something in the replacement box. Or null, sorry, null. Uh, so I'm going to go for the tonic. I'm the red tonic kind of guy. Ha -ha. Right, okay. Um, at the moment, if I then go down to the bounding box, which is here, I should imagine my platonic is huge in comparison. If I can find it. Yep, it's massive. So um, you want to make sure it's within the box. And in fact, um, because the projection area is actually beveled 45 degrees or so, you probably want to keep it sort of 50% of the size of the bounding box. In hindsight, I probably should make my bounding box smaller. Sorry. <laughs> right, so what happens here? is there are an array of cameras which are currently in a hidden layer because you don't need to move those or see them but if you want to know what's going on they're there turn them off again and let's hide them again uh, these cameras are then relayed and projected back onto this other surface which is called bake me baby uh, originally i was going to set up a bake tag and um, do it that way but it actually seems um, a bit laborious so literally all you do is don't move this camera around uh, if we render that there we go, that's our platonic. Um, if the scale seems a bit screwy, obviously mess around with that a bit. Um, uh, the other way, let's try 75%. Let's see how that looks. One thing that's worth noting is um, sometimes, because I'm using Camera Mapper, and in R16, and for as long as I can remember, Camera Mapper sometimes renders differently in the um, workspace than it does in the final render. So it looks okay there now, but if, for example, I now, let's just do one frame, render it out, it might look different. So you might think you're correcting it, while actually making it things wrong. Yep, as I suspected, it um, was correct, it just doesn't render correctly in the preview. So put that back to one, and let's try that again. There we go. So um, if for any reason your content doesn't look right, make sure you render it properly. Don't render it in screen and do a screen grab. So that's it. So you set up your animation, you set up how many frames you want, and you render, and then eventually you should end up with an image sequence or a movie or something like this. So these are just some very quick ones I made. Uh, basketball ball. 
Yeah, it's almost logo. What I do recommend is if you do create this on your, for your iPad, make sure you've got plenty of black at the beginning because it takes you a while to set it up. It also can be useful to stick a cross in the middle for helping you line up if you're using the whole hole rig. Or if you're just using my virtual rig, then it doesn't matter. And also it helps to have a bit of a loop if you're doing a real one rather than a virtual one. So I hope that helps. I hope you have fun with this and I'll be interested to see what people come up with. Take care. Bye.